Christian D. Ron. Hi, everyone. This is D. Ron Slater, and I have a great guest speaker, Dr. Josh Mova Hill, PhD, author, speaker, consultant family discipleship, uh, parenting, grandparenting, biblical worldview, children's youth and family ministry. Remember, I told you all that I was going to have another installment of the Cabal too. But this one is about the cultural Marxist indoctrination of our children agenda that we just have to completely show to you so that this way, you know what's going on in schools, then you know what your children are being taught and how you can prevent it. And we actually have solutions for you at the end of this video. Dr. Josh, a pleasure to have you here with us today. Great to be with you guys. Good to be with you, Duran. And this is, I think, going to be a super, super helpful, important topic that uh, we've seen not enough people know about, and when they do, uh, hopefully there's some action that is taken, because if we don't, we lose our kids, we lose our country, um, and there's some pretty big ramifications to what's being taught right now in the schools all over the country. Now, Dr. Josh, my base, we love facts. You're a facts-based individual yourself. What you're going to present to us, it's not speculative. No, This is no. 100% fact. This is happening right now. It's been happening for 10 plus years in some states, and it's now you're starting to see the fruit of it. We're going to look at that. So we're going to look at very specific examples of literally the tip of the iceberg of what's being taught. So I hope you stick around for the whole thing because we're just going to have this chock full of examples that you're going to see um, all, all, all over the place. So, Saints. Brace yourselves. This is going to be mind blowing. Dr. Josh, please, um, can you do us a favor? Take it away, please. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here. Give me one second to get that rolling. Uh, there we go. You see that, Duran? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. All right. Understanding equity in public schools. Uh, so after we're, we're talking about this idea of equity, which is the term that is used in the educational arena to describe what we're talking about. So I'm going uh, to introduce you to that, and we're going to see how it's being uh, fleshed out and played out. Uh, so Abraham Lincoln once said, the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation is the philosophy of the government in the next. Mm. So what is being taught today in five to 10 years is going to shape what our country becomes. And so if you don't like what you're going to see here in the next 45 to 60 minutes, if you don't want to live in this kind of country, then you better do something about it today because we, the trajectory that we are on, when you, when you train 50 to 55 million kids, that's how many are in the public school system, in this kind of thinking, in this kind of ideology, it will shape our country because these are our future teachers and mayors and school board members and parents and uh, civic leaders and church leaders and everybody. These are the ideas that are being planted in their heads, so absolutely critical. Now let me connect real quick what we're going to talk about with what's happening right now in our country. So if you're wondering why in the world are there so many protests and riots and looting, these aren't just located, you know, we live in Minneapolis, I'm um, in Duran in the suburb area. Uh, this isn't just in Minneapolis. This is literally happening all over the country at the same time. Why is that? Well, it's helpful to recognize that young people are acting upon right now what they have been taught in school for many years, and we're seeing the fruit of that in our society. So in schools, it's called equity. Um, it is a term right now that is being used to, um, to kind of the idea is we need fairness in education, and the underlying assumption is that education is not fair for certain groups. And so we need to 
uh, we need to change the whole system. We need to fix the, it's a, it's a, the whole thing's broken. We need to fix it. And of course, any rational person would not argue that there are problems in education and there are challenges that need to be addressed. But this is not the answer, is the, is the reality. This is not the method. So what you're going to see is a distorted version of equity, a distorted version of fairness. Here's what it in reality is. It redefines morality. It redistributes education, uh, both opportunity as well as uh, correction, all kinds of things, which we'll look at. It is anti-American at its foundation. It is anti-Christian. And as Duran said, it is built on a Marxist ideology that I like to say um, comes in disguised as compassion. It actually becomes, equity is this Trojan horse. And a lot of individuals, you hear the terminology and um, it uses familiar terminology that we would recognize uh, in the Christian community, but it hollows it out, it guts it, and it redefines it. And then it comes in and destroys that which uh, we would believe and hold. So it's a Trojan horse for us. So we need to understand that. It is very, equity is very different from equality. Um, it, it, it exists in those who are advocating for it for past injustices and deficiencies that in their view uh, occurred at some point. So it literally treats people differently, different groups, uh, based on uh, the idea that it's gonna level the playing field. So this is really different education that is being proposed for different groups of people. And so what, what we have here at, its, at the heart is this is discrimination. This is actually reverse racism. This is prejudice in the name of fairness. And so uh, this, we should all be opposed. We all should want fairness. So this doesn't mean we're, we, we don't want fairness. We do. We just want real fairness, actual fairness, real opportunity, not the um, not the uh, not the reverse. Uh, and so the belief here is simply that um, there is unearned educational advantages for some and unfair disadvantages for others. We're going to create groups to show that and then we're going to change the whole reality of, uh, of education. And so you've probably heard some of the terminology in uh, in society, and this is being brought into schools, uh, the idea of e equity, it views students as oppressed groups or oppressors. That's it. And it breaks it down into um, skin color, sexual identity, gender identity, physical ability. So this is uh, also applied to special ed uh, in education as well as religion. And so um, and so it, it attacks these, these privileged groups as, as uh, individuals would claim. Uh, and so what ends up happening uh, is that there are systemic changes that are to level the playing field for all. Some students are artificially lifted up while others are wrongly suppressed and then shamed. Uh, and so here's what this looks like in school. So when I talk on this uh, all over the country, often individuals say, Whoa, 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 uh, that may be at your school, but that's not at my school. That's not in my district, that's not in my state. Maybe you live in a blue state, that's not in my red state. And I'll say, you know what? You just don't know what to look for. You don't know what to listen for. And if you start digging and start looking and listening, you will see it, because it has been around. Uh, and I'll just give you an example. If you've ever heard of the phrase affirmative action, uh, which it's all over the United States, pretty much in every single school, um, this is an early precursor to all this that we're talking about. Uh, this has just gotten, uh, this is affirmative action on steroids that has grown up from its childhood uh, into, uh, into adulthood. And these are the phrases that schools use to talk about wh uh, what we're talking about. So you can see, if, I want you to look for these phrases, go on your school's website, and, uh, and, and look in their literature and listen to superintendents, school board members. Do they use these phrases? Because they will. Cultural competence, school climates, restorative practices, redistributive justice, personalized learning, which is a huge buzzword right now. Uh, white privilege, intercultural specialists might be some of the position hired, anti-bias training. Uh, all kinds of teachers are being trained in anti-bias training, as well as government officials and workplace, uh, workplace officials. 
So pay attention for those. And so then here's what this looks like in schools. So uh, this is uh, one of the implicit bias, anti-bias training days. And you can see teachers are, they need to understand their belief systems and of course check their privilege. And um, the goal isn't just not racism in these, this, so this is the thinking of these, it's anti-racism. Uh, so that's a big, big shift. Uh, then you might see this, uh, so you can see this is one school district from where I live. This is the Eden Prairie School District. They have the Department of Personalized Learning. And you can see down in the red there, it says Equity and Achievement Integration Plan. Uh, so this is literally, it's, uh, this is integrating in all areas of the school. It's not just a fringe thing that's happening. This is literally uh, informing and filtering through everything through this. So those are just a few examples. Um, there's many, many more that we could give. What we have with equity is a huge departure from the American founders' view of justice. And so I'm a Christian. Uh, so, uh, you know, most of them believed in the Bible in some form. Some were deists, others were uh, true Christians, uh, but they believed in the principles of Scripture and literally founded our country on that. And so those biblical principles infused these ideas of equity and justice. And I want you to see an example of this. Uh, we need a baseline to understand what we're going to see here. And so this is uh, how they, uh, they define two things. Uh, in Scripture, we see righteousness and justice is the th throne of God's foundation. That's, uh, that's Psalm 89, 14. And so here's how we define righteousness and justice. This would be what our founders uh, believed. And then uh, and we'll see the distortion of what that, that looks like here as being taught to our kids. So righteousness is the moral standard of right and wrong to which God holds humans accountable based on his divine standard. So the million dollar question, how can we know if something is unfair if we don't have the right standard? And so what we have is a, a standard of right and wrong that is being taught to our kids, which is why I say this is a, a redefinition of morality, really Equity is secular moralism that's being taught to our kids, a view of humanity, a view of sin, a view of uh, really how we should operate in our world. Uh, and it's a, it's a redefinition of righteousness. Justice is the fair and impartial, that's a huge word, impartial application of God's moral law in society. Equity is partiality. Um, and that is how the Bible defines racism. It's the Bible, we are, we are showing... Uh, partiality to somebody based on some standard, whether that's wealth, whether that's, uh, whether that's skin color, whether that's gender, whether that, whatever it is, whatever standard. And the Bible says that's wrong. And so we want impartial application. And here I wanted to show you this in a single picture in our country. So you can see here the statue of Lady Justice, and she uh, reveals the principles of justice that our nation was founded on. So you can see she's blindfolded there, and that's on purpose. Or I think you can in that picture. Uh, so she can practice no bias, implicit bias, right? Uh, never showing favoritism or partiality based on any external standards. And then you can see scales in her hand. Her judgment is to be founded upon objective truth so that there can be fairness. So in other words, those aren't crooked scales. They're level scales. And so notice educational equity wants a level playing field. Well, here's how we get it. We're, we're based on this, based on um, these biblical principles. Uh, and then uh, you see a sword in her hand, the necessity of authority manifested in law and law enforcement. Uh, and so you can see it under all of this, what she's standing on. She's standing on the Bible. That's how we get the right standards. And so our schools have actually done the exact opposite of what we're seeing that our founders built our, our country on. They've removed the blindfold. And so you get attacked. I get attacked if I say, uh, you know, we, we need to be colorblind. I'm not going to treat you based on the skin of your, uh, your, the color of your skin. And so colorblindness right now is viewed as racist. I'll get called a racist and a bigot and all kinds of things for saying what I just said. That's not true. Uh, we want, as, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, we want, to, we want to treat people based on their character, not the color of their skin. And so we essentially don't want to see that. Uh, the, the sword in her hand there 
we need correction when people step outside of what is uh, right. And so uh, what schools essentially are doing, they're removing correction from certain groups, um, the oppressed groups, and they're not holding them accountable. And then we get all kinds of chaos in schools as a result of that. There's no authority. And so you, you know why police are being defunded and attacked in our country. It's because it's a distorted version of this. So let's look. Now let's get into the weeds of what's actually happening in school. So this was a, uh, an example of a, a survey given in a seventh grade classroom. And the belief is that the problems in a student's world in education are caused by an unfair balance of power that causes oppression. And so therefore, uh, the flawed belief is that if all children are given equal outcomes, that all their problems and we'll have all the educational gap of academic uh, differences uh, will suddenly go away. This is again, extremely different view from that our country is founded upon. The Declaration of Independence declares all men are created equal. Right here, we have inequality that is being inserted into the minds of our children. And so what we have is a huge shift from a view of, of students individually to students as group based. And so um, that's a big, big shift. And so students were given this to take as a survey to figure out how privileged they were. And then you can see on the bottom there, um, you're very disprivileged or privileged. And this is essentially a secular view of repentance. You need to check your privilege daily. In other words, you need to repent. And that's how you're gonna help the oppressed groups, the victimized groups um, get uh, you know, success in, uh, in, in education or in society. You know, the problem, this, this not only shames those in the green, um, in, in green, but it also, it, man, this is a slap in the face to people of color because it says you can't succeed unless the other people um, do what's being said here. And I don't believe that. I believe that God has given all people dignity and worth and the ability to succeed uh, and the opportunity, America gives them the opportunity to succeed on their own. And we want to obviously help individuals. That's part of uh, our belief system as Christians, those who need help. We do that freely out of love, out of concern. We're not doing that forced like this does. This is forced love. Uh, and so the Christian motivation is when I see somebody that is other, that is different, that is in need, my loving, caring heart says, I want the best for you. I care for you. I'm going to help you. I want you to uh, succeed in education, to, um, to have a great experience in this life and in this world. So then this, it plays out like this. These are books that kids are given to read. And you can see I kind of highlighted, scribbled there in orange. Uh, that book helps students understand their privilege. So this, parents will not be notified of this. That what, they weren't notified of that, uh, of that uh, survey either that their kids were given. Uh, and so this is coming in in literature where students will read this. They'll, they'll talk about it potentially in class. Uh, I hate you give. These are common books. There's tons of them like this. So parents, pay attention to the literature your kids are being given to, to read, not just what's being said in the classrooms or in curriculum. It's coming in through literature, arts, and in other ways like this. Um, then this is taught, uh, we get in, uh, bias training. Notice in yellow there, nasty little racist inside you. You need to learn that this is white fragility in action in schools. That's uh, for white people only uh, in reality. Uh, and in certain states, every single teacher has to go through training like this in order to be licensed to teach. That's true in Minnesota. It's true where I live. It's true in, uh, in many others as well. And so what this does, if you notice, this is really partiality, this is favoritism, this is discrimination against certain groups based on uh, man's standard rather than God's law. And so God has created all human beings equal in worth and intends for them to be treated with dignity and respect. And we want that. This isn't saying we don't want that. We're saying this isn't the way to achieve that. It actually causes the kinds of problems they want, they say it in their head they want to avoid. And so the million dollar question for us to ask ourselves and our students, who gets to define what's fair and unfair? And as you saw in that, uh, that picture of Lady Justice, God does, not us. And when we begin to remove that standard, uh, all kinds of problems uh, come.
So if I haven't, oh, this is one more here. Um, this was a, uh, a this is a, was an individual who was hired as a consultant to come into schools to look at Christian privilege and white privilege and uh, and to figure out how much of this was present in the school system and then of course make a plan to see that changed. And then what happens as a result? Uh, we get to begin to get things like this taught in schools. So this is an assignment students were given on Islam. And of course we say, well, isn't education supposed to be neutral? Well, not if uh, we're saying, it, if we say it's already unequal, then we need to bring equality. This is, this is a, a, I guess this is equality uh, in school to be teaching this because it's already uh, slanted unfairly towards Christian. And so we're going to teach kids all about Islam. So parents, I hope you don't mind your kids um, embracing it, potentially embracing Islam, because uh, in some places, in some states, in some schools, this is the kind of thing that's being taught uh, under, uh, under Islam. Um, this is at a school and you say, you know, I think this, I don't know if this equity thing is that big of a deal. Uh, well, here you have a whole science, or uh, excuse me, a whole um, English department that is re-looking at filtering the entire uh, English component that they're teaching their kids through social justice, through equity. And you can see the last line there in the black bubble. The purpose of all of English at this high school is engineering social change. And so you, we start to wonder, why are our public schools struggling academically? Maybe it's because they've stopped teaching academics and are now teaching social engineering and social activism. And so our kids, now they think all people with white skin are uh, privileged or uh, racist and they need to go do something like tear down, tear down statues, uh, burn down businesses, start to to a riot and, uh, and, and tear down this, the racist structures of our country rather than actually learning valuable skills in English that they might need for communication as an adult in whatever world that they live and, and operate in their current and future um, uh, careers. Uh, my goodness. So that's just one example. So if I haven't convinced you yet, why not to embrace and endorse public school equity? Here are a couple reasons. One, equity leads to academic decline. Um, it literally lowers educational outcomes by implementing, as I said, different standards for different students, all in the name of fairness. And so in schools that have implemented equity, literacy rates and math scores have done this. Woo, they have gone down. And that is, that's not Josh's opinion. Just go look at schools who have implemented this. And I'll, I'll just say this, show me one school, one, I've not seen one, show me one school where equity has, uh, has increased reading scores, have increased math scores. They don't, they do the exact opposite. And one of the, one of the claims with equity is we need to close the academic gap between different groups. It doesn't do that because it, the, the idea is we're gonna level this playing field. And so what it does is it actually dumbs down the top. It, it eliminates your honors courses. It eliminates your, um, your accelerate, you know, all your good, it, it dumbs it all down to get to, the, to a level playing field. And so you, you go to the lowest common denominator in order to make it fair for all. And so therefore every, everybody suffers, now, not, um, not just a few. And so here's an example of what's happened in one district. This is Edina. Um, they, it says six years after officials in Edina decided to view all teaching and learning through the lens of racial equity, it's clear the district administration has taken its eye off the ball of academic excellence. Edina is experiencing across the board test score declines from third grade reading to ACT benchmarks in math science and reading, as well as, along with an equity, or uh, excuse me, an exodus of families the district can't afford to lose. Edina's experience provides a cautionary tale of what can happen when a school district renowned for academic excellence embraces a social mission that requires viewing students not as individuals, but as members of racial groups. So if you're in a school and this is the reality, expect academics are going to suffer. If you are on a school board and you are considering, should we do this or should we not? This is the outcome that 
uh, all schools have so far experienced. This is a failed educational philosophy. It is, it is proven now. It's, it's, this has been around for a long enough time. We can actually see what happens in schools with this. And so here's what this does. Here's how this changes from academics to social engineering. Uh, this is a text that one of my friends received about what their school was teaching Shakespeare to her high school student. Right about in the middle there, maybe you can read. One of the predominant themes revolves around long-standing bias against a group of people, the Capulets versus the Montagues. Next week, I'll have students take notes on implicit versus explicit biases and microaggressions. You're telling me that Shakespeare was written because of microaggressions? This is nuts. And so this is, this is happening on a much wider and commonplace scale that our kids aren't learning what is, you know, this isn't academics, this is, this is social. And so that of course, uh, then uh, Shakespeare is used to teach our kids that they are racist uh, or what level of racism and privilege they have and they need to check that and, uh, and, and blah, blah, blah. Second, equity leads to behavior problems. So under equity policy, bad behavior is ignored for certain groups of students. And so instead, behavior is being identified as appropriate for certain cultures of offending students. So the approach that is used is, comes under lots of different terms. Uh, often it's restorative justice. And what it does is it shifts from correction to um, some form of learning where a white person or others will, a listening session needs to occur. Um, and what ends up happening is it leads to chaos in classrooms because certain groups of school or students are not held accountable for their actions and they have limited ramifications um, that then end up cover, coming. So I want you to see an example of this. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna switch out here uh, to one other thing um, so that you can see a video here of what this looked like in St. Paul Public Schools. Uh, let me play it and get rolling. There we go. For the first time, a former St. Paul teacher talks publicly about his half million dollar legal settlement with St. Paul schools. Aaron Benner claimed he was retaliated against after criticizing the district for not disciplining African American students the same as other students. And Jay Coles is here now. And Jay, you spoke with Benner yourself. Yeah, but you know, he his lawsuit might be done, but he's not done talking just yet. Aaron Benner is still teaching, just not with St. Paul schools. Benner tells me he still believes the school district's racial equity plan hurts minority students, especially, he says, African Americans. This is Aaron Benner's position right now on racial equity plans in public schools. As a black man, you have to be able to deal with this. Racism and how to deal with it and making excuses are not going to help. And I believe that if we continue with these racial equity policies, according to St. Paul Public Schools, you are crippling black children because they're going to be unemployed and unemployable in the future we're all gonna suffer. Benner says the district retaliated against him after these statements to the school board five years ago. And I'm here again because I believe we are crippling our black children by not holding them to the same expectations as other students. Cussing out your teacher is not black culture. Refusing to do work is not black culture. Not following directions is not black culture. Hitting other students is not black culture and assaulting your teacher is not black culture. In the 2014 school year, the district adopted a racial equity plan that would, quote, decrease the number of suspensions of students of color by no less than 25%. And in classroom work, it directed schools to, quote, focus accountability systems and metrics on racially equitable results. Equity is not equal outcomes, in my opinion. What is it? Fairness, giving everybody equal opportunity. Some people may need extra resources, but just ignoring behaviors or giving a pass for a failing grade or graduating somebody who can't read, that is not equity. One school district leader wrote a 2014 email which says, quote, All right. So there you go. You've got different standards for different students. And that's what ends up happening. Uh, and this is applied to behavior, the behavior of students. Whoops. Deron, are you seeing my uh, PowerPoint? Or are you seeing the video right now? Um, I'm actually just getting you. Getting me? Oh, did you guys see it? Did you not see that video? No, I saw the video. 
Oh, good. Okay. All right. Sorry, I got to – let me get this back up. Sorry, everyone. Give me one second. Boom and boom. Okay. Different standards for different students. Uh, that doesn't help any student, whether they are white, black, whatever, uh, deal with the accountability they need to succeed in the real world. And so you get in, you get into the real world, and you're, you know, you you do something in the in the work world that you're not going to get a free pass. You're going to get fired. And so we can't give our. We need to help our kids succeed in the school world. That if they do something that is uh, not helpful to the school itself or to them individually, we need to help them by holding them accountable. Uh, but some schools are, are beginning to not do that, and they're calling that a, a cultural issue. Uh, it's really a, it's a hard issue. Third, equity is a school, is a tool to attack American history. And so equity is driven by rampant criticism of the founders of our country and American history who are being accused of being unjust to either Native Americans for stealing their land, I'm sure you've heard that argument, committing genocide against them, as well as founding our country on racism and building it on the backs of slaves. And so therefore we need to tear the whole thing down. Um, so equity seeks to deconstruct our history and rebuild the whole thing. And this is literally on, this is kind of this Marxist idea. Uh, and so here's one example of what is being taught. I was stunned when instructors told us that Thomas Jefferson's famous words from our Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal, actually mean that only white male property owners can vote. They said the phrase under God in the Pledge of Allegiance is an example of our Christian privilege. They similarly twisted Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Their basic message was that our society operates on white and Christian privilege, and we must accept and own that fact. They are directly attacking America by perverting its history. And so then kids in classroom are given curriculum like this. This is a specific example where they're taught that Abraham Lincoln was a believer, implying he was a white supremacist. And this was the reason that he uh, moved forward with uh, the Civil War. And so this is just one example of many we could give. But equity is, is a tool used to attack America to push white guilt, systemic racism of America, and revisionist history. So I, I want to make a side note. This doesn't mean um, we don't speak to some of the horrible injustices that have happened in our country in slavery and that continue to happen in racist acts because there are obviously those. However, uh, the idea that, that our country is, is built on racism just simply is not true. And I wanna show you some examples. This is from uh, President um, George Washington, 1787. He wrote a letter uh, and he was wrestling with how do we, how do we found this country um, we, we've got an issue with racism, as he saw it. Do we try to fix that issue first and then build America, or do we, do we build America as we fix that issue? And he just, here's what he said. So President Washington said, there is not a man living who wishes more sincerely than I do to see a plan adopted for the abolition of slavery. Patrick Henry said, I believe a time will come when an opportunity will be afforded to abolish this lamentable evil. We could put all kinds of views from our founders like this up. Um, the reality, I just, you know, I have a single, single question for those who push back against this, and there are many. The 1619 Project is gaining extreme momentum to teach our kids this distorted view. Uh, but I, you know, just, here's a simple question. Which non-Christian societies had indigenous abolitionist movements and got rid of slavery on their own and have worked toward racial equality thanks to the moral revulsion of its citizens? Name one. America's it. We are a unique country. Uh, and we're not perfect. Uh, we still have work to do. But, it, but we have come a long way, uh, and this is literally turning the, the clock back on the civil uh, movement that we have had that has made such good advances. Doesn't mean we're there, but it doesn't mean we tear down the whole system. And so what is at stake here is the future of America as we know it. Then number four, 
equity is socialism in disguise or Marxism in disguise. Uh, I, I, as I said, it's disguised as compassion, uh, sees the world as two groups, oppressed and oppressor. Uh, and it can be summarized by the idea that oppressed uh, groups must be liberated from all forms of oppression. That's the goal. We got to liberate. Um, whether it's gender, race, class, politics, religion, uh, you, you name it. So here's how kids are taught this. You, you've more than likely seen a picture like this. Um, if we've got equality versus equity, two very different ideas. Uh, so to teach this concept, children are shown in the example of these three kids on the left, the equality one. They're trying to look over a fence. And there's, so there's a short, medium, and tall child. And the yeah, in this first slide on the left, they're given equality, uh, each, each a box to stand on. And the result is that a shortest kid there uh, needs a boost, can't see. So we've got a problem, right? That's a real need. Nobody, nobody denies that there's a need there. But then uh, a second slide is shown. The tallest boy's box is given to the shortest kid, with the shortest kid now standing on two boxes, the middle child keeps, the middle one keeps his box and the tallest gets none. And so now the, the result is that everybody can see over the fence equally. And so the conclusion here that's taught to kids is that fairness isn't everybody getting the same thing. Fair is everybody getting what they need in order to be successful. This is personalized learning talk right here, by the way. But it, it was Karl Marx who once said the same thing from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. And so the ability to see over a fence like this is a, just a sweet way to slip socialism into a child's education. How, you know, how could anybody disagree with letting a little child see over a fence? But here's the, here's the question. Children aren't, aren't taught to worry about who takes the box from the larger child. Children aren't taught to ask who paid for these boxes. Children are not taught to question individual choice in the matter. This is loss of freedom. This is loss of liberty right here. Children are not taught to brainstorm ways for the shorter child to figure out a way around the problem on his own. Children are not taught how to help this younger child, except they get, uh, on, this is charity, right? This is compassion. This is uh, how do we teach the, the bigger child to help the younger child? Uh, and this is forced redistribution that's being taught here to, to these children. And so children are taught to swallow socialistic teaching without thought or without question. Uh, I just saw this recently. Uh, this is Black Lives Matter that is now uh, putting out curriculum to be taught in public schools nationally. So you can see this is the week of action, national demands. Now, um, the founders of Black Lives Matter have come out of the organization, have come out and said, uh, we are trained Marxist. Uh, and so it's the, this is another way to slip in these Marxist ideas. You can see the focus there uh, is on history, uh, is on anti-bias training with teachers and, and more black teachers. And um, I have no problem with black teachers. We, you know, if the most qualified person should get the job, um, not because we just have certain skin color. Amen. Uh, it's racist to hire a person because they're simply white. And it's the same thing if that person is a person of color. Uh, and so we want great uh, black teachers. We want great white teachers. We want great teachers. That's the, that's the issue. When you put a, an adjective in front of anything, it becomes problematic. Um, so fun counselors, not cops. Um, so this is coming into our school. So you wonder, how is it that our Youngest generation are millennials. Uh, we have, maybe you've seen surveys that a third of them see themselves as socialists, that upwards of 60 to 70% would vote for a democratic socialist. Where did that come from? They're being taught this socialist idea in the school. And then lastly here, equity, as I said, is a, is a, a secular view of morality. So we have to have some standard of what is right and wrong. And what is that standard? Uh, we know in the 60s, uh, pr uh, prayer was removed, the Ten Commandments were removed, and what we end up having is this void of morality then, that it, it's not, there's not, there's, education's never neutral. Something always comes and fills that place. 
And so what has come and filled that, that place is man's idea of what is right and wrong. And so literally children are being taught a secular view of that that's being manifested right now in this way in public schools. And so um, this is a, a, an assignment that was given to grade school students on, uh, in math. A lot of parents think, well, math is safe, right? Uh, there's nothing that can happen in math. Um, well, here's a, a secular morality being taught in math on reparations on how much white landowners uh, could owe to uh, slave descendants. And so they're supposed to figure that out in, the, in, their, uh, in, in that math assignment. This is literally, equity is a moral revolution that is seeking to transform our society. You have to understand that. And kids are being, millions of kids are being trained in this all over our country. Uh, we can't, this is, we have to realize the impact that this is gonna have long term. So what do we do about it? What do we do about this? We better not sit on our haunches, but I wanna give you five quick solutions because I hate it when people say, here's a problem and there's no solution. So here's five I'm gonna give you. One, we practice the golden rule. Um, don't think that you know, we're, we don't love all people. We want to treat everyone with dignity, respect, with love. We want to teach our kids to treat others well. Uh, and in, in the Bible, that's the golden rule. So the solution to hatred and partiality and favoritism and racism is God's love. That's, it. I mean, that's that simple. We want to train our kids with that. We want to do that ourselves. Uh, so do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Second, teach children the truth about justice. This is a distorted view. Uh, and so justice is really as fairness. It's the application of what is good and right. Uh, three, teach children true American history. Parents, it's not happening more and more in the school system. So if your kids are in public schools, you have to do this at home. Find some good resources that don't start twisting American history based on systemic racism and tearing it down. Um, there's some great ones out there. Uh, Wall Builders is a good one. Dinesh D'Souza has a great video that he came out with on uh, America. I think it's on, uh, on Amazon. Um, uh, any of your kind of your patriotic resources are, are going to be fantastic. Uh, the Providence Foundation is another good one. Um, we need to work to transform our public schools. Uh, we work, uh, and I think this is on, you know, we're not going to probably transform schools nationally, but we can do that locally. So focus on your local school, your school district. So uh, run for school board, get on your curriculum committees, speak up act up. If we don't, these things are going to take further and further root. Uh, and so talk to your school board members. Uh, we have wrote op-eds. We made videos just like these. We started educating parents so that they would know. Uh, and every single voice matters. If we don't speak up, um, that, you know, they, they call it the silent majority. It needs to become the vocal majority so that the, the, the masses are not um, dictated by this silent radical or this loud radical minority, which is really what it, it is. Um, and then last, some may just need to remove their kids from education, as this gets, from public education. As this gets more and more radical, um, there's lots of great um, options for, for most people locally. I want to encourage you to look into those. Um, we have our own online Christian academy called Illumin Ed. Uh, it's about $3,000 per year live teachers. And in this uh, COVID era, maybe you are looking for a different option uh, if you want something for your kids. So this is sixth through 12th grade, academically rigorous, Christian at its heart. It's, gonna, it's not gonna teach this equity garbage, at least distorted equity. It'll teach true equity according to God's word. Wanna encourage you to, uh, to look at that. Here's some resources we have on our website, renewnation.org specifically that are uh, education specific on how to understand what's happening, how to respond to what's happening. Uh, a couple great books for you. Kingdom Education Helps Parents Understand uh, a Philosophy of Education According to the Bible. Uh, Biblical Worldview is, what, is a book that I wrote on how do we teach kids to think and live according to God's word so they don't become, uh, they don't absorb all these, these false ideas like equity that are being taught to them. Um, so we got some great resources there, coaching calls. So we got a free magazine that uh, focuses on what's happening in public schools. Love to get that in your hand. Um, and you can 
Uh, if you're interested in any of that, you can reach out to us at info at renewnation.org and uh, we're happy to help you in, uh, in any way that we can. There you go, Duran. I think we, uh, I think that's what we got. Let me stop the share here and we'll go back to you. There you go. Gotcha. Okay. So that presentation was awesome and I like that you offered an alternative, but I want to share this too. Okay, you guys. Some of the things that I just noticed. Also to help, to aid, okay, in changing the trajectory of our culture. Grandparents, move into position of school board's positions, okay? City councils, et cetera. Parents, okay? Move into leadership roles in the church and communities. Teach your children the Bible and the ways they, sh they should go, okay? Mm -hmm. We have to be a little bit more, um, um, let me be a little bit more frank. Dr. Josh, the society that we have right now, it's all solely due to liberalism, AKA secularism, okay? This is what they call, <laughs> this, they call this a, a humanistic uh, secular worldview. This Absolutely. is what it is, quote unquote. This is the definition of it. Secularism, ever since they took God out of school, okay, let's just say the Bible, prayer, God, remove the Ten Commandments from in front of the uh, Supreme Court, what has happened to our society? Moral decay, mm -hmm. suicide across all demographics has skyrocketed, teenage pregnancy, abortion on the rise, illiteracy on the rise the rise of single parent homes, massive incarcerations, school shootings, school shootings, child abuse has become more prevalent. What's adding to all of this? Why is this happening now? Because we have been told that we have to accept the secular's culture. And since we have accepted it, these are the results. These are the fruits. And it's irrefutable. You cannot argue with the fruits. Our, let me say this, our society is on a decline, but also moving in reverse. We are watching right now the unravel of the civil rights movement. The unravel, okay, of intellectual, I should say, contributions as far as Sound, science, <laughs> that's even been argued and actually it's been diminished. Why? Because of the world secular view. We don't want this culture. We do not have to accept this culture. Who told Christians that this is the status quo? Mm -hmm. mm -mm. We weren't asked. This is a Christian country. We were founded on Christianity. This is Christ's country, and people can take that any way that they want to, but it's just the facts. So, Dr., uh, I, I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Josh. Yeah, it's a joy. I hope this has opened the eyes of many, and uh, I'll say this. Go do your research. Go look for yourself, because we're not making this up. It's not our opinion. It's what is happening. And so I want you, you know, base it on facts, uh, and, and if you care about your kids in this country, do something. Do something. Hey, man, time is running out. Mm -hmm. And even if you are not inclined to take initiative, mm -hmm. let this be a strong incentive for you. Think about how many kids are being led to the gates of hell by this false Okay, compassion. This, you know, I, you know, doctor, and sometimes I, I, I'm just dumbfounded. This is so surreal. I cannot believe I'm witnessing this. We are actually having debates with people about biology. What is your biology? What's your DNA? We are having debates with people about what is actually the truth. Yeah. And then forced to accept insanity. Enough is enough Amen. but Amen. action 
Action, take action. It is time that we take our country back. Not enough to know. We got to get moving. Yep. Amen, my brother. Amen. Dr. Josh, thank you so much for blessing us with this information and for making my base even that much more knowledgeable. Knowledge is not power. I consider that, you know, just to be one of the biggest misconceptions socially. And it's, 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 I hate that it's, it, <laughs> I hate it is a cliche. Knowledge with action is true power. So let's, 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 let's take that power that we have and let's change it. Great. Thanks Dr. for what you do. I appreciate you, man. Okay, my brother. I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, sure. Bless you.